Hello and welcome to this new episode of our program, The Beat. Well, as we promised you, we're going to get to each single tiny megabeat happening in our beautiful land in Egypt. So please stay tuned as we will be back right after this. Welcome back. Well, tonight we are in Saudi Culture Wheel and to be more precise in the Wisdom Hall to bring you a very exclusive event of its kind, which is the concert that really combines a lot of beautiful talents. We have the Abidou Symphony Orchestra featuring uh, Dolly or Dalia Farid Fadel. George uh, Aziz, the great violinist, is an amazing person. You should see that actually in the, I should not be biased, but you should see that. And we have the baritone, George Gamel. Let's watch. <laughs> In April 2015, Dahlia made her national theatre debut on the Hanegar Theatre, playing the main role of Mary in an original Arabic musical, Badlat al Barq or Saqiya, where she and Egyptian composer and conductor George Kolta wrote the music. In September 2015, Dahlia played the leading role of Amal in the Arabic opera Ayam wa Layali al-Shagar al-Qalb, performed by the exceptional Blind Girls Orchestra al Nur wal Amal. In August 2015, she co-founded with Kalta the Old Saints Choir. Her repertoire includes opera and musical theater, jazz, pop, folk, French chanson, and Arabic music. Dalia Farid's dream is to continue to be part of artistic endeavors all over the world, and in particular to see a thriving musical theater scene revived in Egypt. To achieve this dream, she co-founded with her mother, Dr. Mona Zaki, leading Egyptian businesswoman, strategist and professor, Soft Power Productions, as well as the All Science Center for the Arts, a performing and visual arts center in the heart of Cairo. Who is your idol? My mother. My mother is the most perseverant woman. She's the most sacrificial woman I know. She is. She doesn't. She really taught me um, perseverance. She taught me that everything is possible with hard work and God's blessing. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't need anything else in life. Mm -hmm. And she taught me about faith. She taught me about love, unconditional love. She taught me about. Um, Beauty. She's a very elegant woman. Yeah, she is. Um, what didn't she ta teach me, honestly? So, Dr. Mona Zaki. Yeah, that's amazing. Mi madre. <laughs>
music field artistically? Who is your uh, idol? In opera, it's uh, between Fleming and Anna Netrebko because their voices are incredible and Anna Netrebko is the best performer. In musical theater, um, I love Audrey Hepburn. Oh. I know her and Julie Andrews, obviously, yeah. but like just her rendition of My Fair Lady was yeah. incredible and I sing her stuff all the time. Um, and in Arabic music, I love Shadzia. Oh. I think Shadia is just adorable, and of course Saat Hosni, and yeah. yeah, plenty of people, <laughs> plenty of people to learn from. So yeah. In general, what inspires you? People, places, and poetry. I would say these are three things: people, meeting people that just blow blow you away with their love, um, that are that believe in what they do and they do it like my mother and like my father and and like my grandmother and like. Like all the time, you meet them, Nurul Amal girls. Mm -hmm. Like they are my sisters yeah, okay. now, and they yes. really inspire me. And they inspired one of my songs in the upcoming album, yeah. actually. And um, places because I was just in Greece, for instance, and yeah. I picked up the ukulele as soon as I got from Greece because there's something so beautiful and earthy about yeah. Greece, and it makes you go back to your nature, human nature. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not like. You know, it's there's there's something ethereal yeah. about it. It's outside of space, outside of time. Yeah. And poetry, because poetry is language yeah. of love. So it inspires. I love Nizor Kobbeni. Mm -hmm. I love um, Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. She's um, amazing. I love uh, Salah Jaheen and his Rubaiyat. Yeah. I love um, all sorts of like, yeah, all the William Blake and mm -hmm. John Donne and all the li English literature poets. Yeah. plenty yeah. of diff I, I pick up a lot of things on my way yeah. so you just mentioned the Nurul Amal which is actually I don't know if definitely you know it's yeah. the, the one and only um, blind yeah. girls um, orchestra yeah. so, and it's in Egypt yeah. so yeah. tell me about your experience with them uh, I have a, a crazy experience with them actually because I did a, a whole opera with them uh, last year yeah. and it wasn't that well organized mm -hmm. so we me and the girls were organizing it basically mm -hmm. and learned a lot about perseverance learned a lot about contentment they're very content women they're they know what they're doing and they love what they do and they do it well mm -hmm. and they're so grateful for every small thing like you'd offer them something very small like mm -hmm. a fruit or, or mm -hmm. chocolate or whatever and they would be so grateful and they're also because of their contentment they're very generous women yeah. so I won't talk about how good they are as artists because they are great artists and we yeah. all know and we've all been to their concerts and we're flabbergasted at the end but as girls like I I think at least four girls have offered me gifts yeah. four girls have offered me either a perfume mm -hmm. or what was it um, I think it was a scarf or something like just different girls are constant and asking about you they're mm -hmm. always asked they remember you sometimes you you arrive in the room and you just say good morning and somehow they could detect exactly how you're feeling yeah. and it's because yes they've been deprived of sight mm -hmm. but man have they sharpened every single other sense yeah. Yeah. so it's 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 really an experience getting yes. to know them I, I only humbling to say the least. <laughs>
Basically, you also performed uh, abroad. So, tell me, how did your career kind of um, take off internationally? Internationally, I think it started with Savun Lina in uh, Dr. Nivin Haluba, my professor. She recommended me to go take this class with um, Aya Tolpa. I think her name was. She was a Finnish um, opera instructor. Uh, so I did it at the Cairo Opera House, and then from there they invited me and Amira Rida and Raga Idzin, and we were just a trio of three Egyptian opera singers. Yeah. So I studied with um, Tom Krause yeah. in, in Finland, and that was incredible. And that's where I started uh, performing in Finland, and I can went to the London mm -hmm. and the Royal Academy, and then I performed there, mm -hmm. and that was amazing, amazing. And then I guess, w oh yeah, when I was in the Royal Academy, the Swiss ambassador there at London asked me to sing in the acad in the embassy. So it's been just like one thing leads yeah. to another, and I and I really believe that. Like, don't you can't start too small. Like, yes. it started with me going to a workshop in Cairo Opera House. So this led me to Finland. So mm -hmm. so it's things like that. Yeah, don't be discouraged if you start small. There's no one starts like internationally or anything like that. Yeah. What are the challenges that you're facing? Everything is a challenge. <laughs> Everything from like um, like how I eat mm -hmm. and how I train. I'm an athlete, yeah. basically. You know, I have to, in order to hit these high notes, in order to feel good for that long amount, you know, that period mm -hmm. of time, singing and, um, and moving and acting, you have to be in great shape. So that's one thing. Then it was the competition. You know, sometimes it's... It's hard to be in an academy, one of the best academies, because everyone is trying to make it, and rightly so, they have to make it, because this is their work, and this yes. is what they've dedicated their lives yes. to. So I did. I needed more support in London, but but God God provides all the yes. support. And then here, it's the lack of organization. There's yeah. no, um, there aren't that many opportunities for artists, which is a shame, because Egypt is full of talented people, yeah. you know, and full of stories to tell and full of writers and full of singers. Mm -hmm. It's just the organize, the organizing body that will bring all these people mm -hmm. with a stage manager and stuff and be like, right, so we need you to write and you to direct and you mm -hmm. to perform and by this, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just this, this person, the ligaments, yes. you have all the muscles, yes. but it's just it's the, because. yeah, exactly. <laughs>
about the music scene in general in Egypt? I think it's flourished after the revolution. I think that one thing that's good, um, that's for sure and yeah. in, 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 indubitable, you know, you, it's, you can't doubt it, you can't debate it, is that the music scene, the art scene after the revolution, which is expected because ev after every single political event, major political event, there's mm -hmm. always been an artistic revolution. Mm -hmm. So. I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that something like Masar Iqbari or Cairo Key or Sharmoufers or Dina Al Wadidi or uh, all these incredible yeah. artists that have just blossomed after and 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 the awareness of underground yeah. music. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm very grateful to to be in the business after the revolution because it's going very well. So tonight you are um, performing with the Abydos uh, Symphony Orchestra and featured by uh, George Gamel and Mr. Uh, uh, Aziz George as well. Tell me about this experience. So the Abydos Symphony is uh, the work of the, the Soft Power Productions, which is headed by my mother, Dr. Munazaki, and what she realized, she realized that there aren't enough opportunities for artists to perform, so she decided to put together with George Kulta, the maestro, the Abydos Symphony Orchestra. So it was great. It's great to sing with George. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. He's a great guy, and um, Maestro Aziz um, Aziz George is also an incredible, incredible artist. And so it's it's beautiful. I I also had the pleasure to to sing with Autar, which is Yasser Ghanem, Khaled Saleh, and I saw Abdul Hamid and Muhammad Abdul Fateh, and honestly, the best I think. So so I'm very biased, I guess, but. Um, yeah, they they did so well. So I'm grateful to perform with amazing artists. Yeah. So just heard tonight that you're preparing uh, for the release of your first album. Tell me more about it. So I've been for the past two years. I've been writing. So I've been in Egypt for the past two years, and I never sang in Arabic before coming to Egypt. And so I still I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm an Oriental singer, but I'm a jazz singer that sings in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And and that's been a journey. And it's been a journey finding my voice in Arabic. Like I'm conducting an English interview yeah. with you and that's my comfort zone. But it was journey getting back to the roots because I was in London and I, I guess I realized how Egyptian I was while studying in London. Because yeah. when I was there, I was the Egyptian girl. Here I'm always the Khawega or I'm yeah. always the person that's, you know, multi, multi, you know, culture or whatever. Yeah. But there I was the Egyptian girl and I realized how much I love my country and how much I love expressing myself through Arabic um, singing. And so, um, my album is in Arabic, Perfect. it's probably a couple of songs in, in another language, but mm -hmm. 
it's in Arabic and it's all music I've written in the past two years mm -hmm. and I've been reading a lot of poetry in Arabic be to be able to kind of express myself and I don't know hope hopefully be good yeah <laughs> other projects so writing a musical and um, trying to sing in different places yeah. I'm not sure I'm, I'm taking you one step <laughs> at a time it will it will it will yeah it will we'll see. figure it out <laughs> the right time well Dolly thank you so much we really had a blast tonight thank and you. we enjoyed every bit of the concert yes, and yes. I wish you the best of the best ever so much sweet thank you <laughs> The beats, the beats. Everybody who rides me, listen to my beats. I know I'm a party, we won't get off your senses. Stand up to kick, put up your sleeves, try to get your kick on the drop down pit. Everybody who rides me, listen to my beats. I know I'm a party, we won't get off your senses. Stand up to kick, and grab your sleeves. Well, that brings us to the end of this special episode of The Beats. I really hope that you've enjoyed it as much as we did. And until we see you again, feel the beat. The beat.